Member statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, workers from Cosmetica, a cos cosmetics manufacturing company, one that makes makeup, Mr. Speaker, was deemed essential by this government during the pandemic, one that makes makeup, which meant that workers had no choice but to work throughout the pandemic. Earlier this month, workers, and you know what, I gotta, I gotta actually tell you, a lot of these workers were very scared and we were trying to help them throughout the pandemic to help them because they had family members who had immune compromised uh, situation and these workers were told if they didn't go to work, they will lose their jobs. Earlier this month, workers who had been working there since 2007 were given termination letters. That is 180 workers, Mr. Speaker, who have been terminated in the middle of a pandemic. Cosmetica has told workers that it was because of automation. And if workers criticized the company, they were told that they would lose their severance pay. We have also learned that Cosmetica has informed the government about their decision to fire 180 workers, and the government had no problem with that. Mr. Speaker, this government that claims to help workers, to create jobs, that made these big, bold claims, where is this government right now when 180 workers, mainly racialized women, who are in their 50s, losing their job, and they will have no place to go, and CERB won't help them? Where is this government right now, Mr. Speaker? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> member statements. The member from Milton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, yesterday was a great news announcement by the Premier for Milton. This Friday, we will be moving into stage three. During this pandemic, I have been so proud of our community. We have seen community come together like never before, Mr. Speaker. The creation of grassroots organizations like Milton Strong and Milton COVID Response, donating donations of PPE, monetary donations, food hampers, delivering medication for seniors. Wow. And I can go on and on, Mr. Speaker. Throughout the pandemic, small businesses have been hit in a significant way and their bottom line, Mr. Speaker, especially restaurant owners. Speaker, restaurants around Milton have been able to adapt their businesses to increase takeout and delivery. But many do not have patios and have not been able to serve customers at their location. They have been busy putting precautions in place to ensure customers and employees remain safe as they resume dine-in service. Speaker, I know businesses around Milton are very much looking forward to moving into stage three as of Friday. And I wanna thank our entire community for being there and supporting one another during some of the most difficult times. Thank you. Member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. From the outset of this pandemic, Ontario's NDP called for the collection of race-based and other demographic data to concentrate the necessary resources to fight the spread of COVID-19. Of course, people already struggling before a crisis will be the hardest hit. I'm talking about vulnerable seniors in long-term care facilities. I'm talking about low-income essential workers packed like sardines in transit, unable to work from home, many living together, sharing small units because the cost of housing in Toronto is unlivable. I'm talking about overworked and underpaid frontline health workers. Let's stop just praising them and let's really start helping them. Now we have the data and it shows what so many of us have been saying, Black Creek Community Health Centre and other agencies and individuals. Toronto Public Health, Councillors Joe Cressy and Anthony Perusa, our local Humber River Hospital, and many others. And that is that COVID-19 is hitting some neighbourhoods and some people harder than others. People in my community, people in the Premier's own community, many neighbourhoods in Toronto. I want to thank Christian Centre Church in my community for making its space at 4545 Jane Street available for mobile COVID-19 testing. There will be testing again tomorrow, Wednesday, June 22nd from 48 p.m. and from Friday, June 24th from 48 p.m. There's more we need to do and we meet, need more testing dates. And we also need help to help those who need to self-quarantine when they test COVID, possible, uh, COVID positive. We're all in this together. Let's keep up the hard work. Thank you. The member for Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I 
join my residents of Thornhill in accepting a bit of the new normal. Uh, people are wearing masks now specifically indoors, and um, the medical experts are advising us to wear the mask. York Region now, since July 17th, has mandated the wearing of masks. The order is in effect until November 30th. Um, you know what? I want to remind people to wash their reusable masks, and in fact, they can fold up a piece of paper towel and put it in the little pocket and keep changing that as the day goes on, um, and that's also recommended. Um, I just wanted to mention that during the campaign, I was asked what Premier Doug Ford, at the time he was the leader of our party, uh, what, was it, what was Doug Ford like? And I said he was actually like a camp director, and I think this pandemic really shows that. Um, he's shown great leadership through these unprecedented times, and I want to personally thank Premier Doug Ford, and my riding wants to thank him as well. Gillian Rashkavan from Thornhill made a beautiful box. It's in the UPS store next to my office, and uh, people have already started putting in thank you cards to the Premier in the box. I want to invite all my colleagues from all parties to join me in thanking the Premier. A big, huge thank you, and to wish him well to ask him to please take some time off. I don't believe he's had a full day off this entire pandemic. Please take some time off to spend with your beautiful wife, your wonderful daughters, and, um, and your friends and relatives. So thank you, everybody. Stay safe and enjoy the warm weather. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Kiwetnam. Good morning, uh, Mr. Speaker. Since the state of emergency uh, began in March, there has been 10 deaths by suicide in the communities in my riding. Unfortunately, uh, the situation is not unique. Uh, First Nations people face uh, mental health issues and experience crisis uh, on a regular basis. These issues come from uh, our experiences of uh, inequality, cultural disruption, oppression, and colonialism that continues today, Mr. Speaker. Although there have been many announcements uh, of funding to support mental health, uh, there's a difference between investing in communities and committing uh, to actual mental health transformation. Mr. Speaker, uh, flying communities, uh, flying First Nations are left to face the consequence of uh, having no drinking water, no safe, affordable housing, reduced access to education and health care, all of which reduce our quality of life. Speaker, uh, we understand, we have to understand that this is the, uh, a much deeper issue our communities do not have the social determinants of health. On top of that, uh, they are responding to mental health and suicide emergencies. Mr. Speaker, this is a crisis and it's, it needs to be taken seriously. Life under this pandemic has worsened these issues. Without appropriate and proper access to medical supplies, uh, healthcare professionals and mental health uh, supports, we cannot call this equality. How can Ontario say that they provide equal treatment for everyone? We need better uh, mental health supports, better access, and better treatment. And we need it now. Miigwech, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa, Vanier. Merci, Mr. Thank you, Speaker. I want to take this opportunity to reflect on my first few months as the new MPP for Ottawa, Vanier. I want to start by thanking you, all members, for the kind words of welcome as I joined the legislator in this unique, challenging time. Navigating my way through a reality that has been changing every day has been part of the challenge, but keeping on top of things so that I can guide constituents reaching out to me has revealed the importance of being there to help. Sitting in this chamber, I have been encouraged by the spirit of collaboration I have seen between all members since the beginning of this pandemic. Many people have expressed how much they appreciate this collaboration as it reflects that we are working together in their best interests. However, as we continue into the fall, we should be aware of how we can still do better and strive to build upon our collaborative effort of this summer. Another aspect of my work here, and that is very important, is the possibility to work in respect. I have raised my kids, teaching them respect, respect, respect of others, of their environment, and I would like them and all Ontarians to feel included and inspired by our actions here instead of being cynical towards politics. I can't wait to keep working with all members here when we start again in the fall, and I encourage all of us to try to do the best of what we have learned during the pandemic by being more collaborative. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. 
Thank you very much. Statements. Member for Eglinton Lawrence. Since COVID-19 first emerged as a public health threat in Ontario earlier this year, in fact, it's been almost six months to the first case, January 25th. And thanks to the hard work and determination of people across our province, we are seeing positive trends continue. More businesses are reopening and more people are getting back to work. Many regions of the province have already entered stage three and more will enter this Friday. And while it may take a little bit longer for those of us in Toronto, Peel and Windsor-Essex, we're on the right track. But this does not mean that the pandemic is over. Far from it. You don't have to look any further, unfortunately, than my riding, where the Villa Colombo continues to struggle with a COVID-19 outbreak that has yet to be resolved. Last week, Humber River Hospital was appointed by the Ministry of Long-Term Care to manage Villa Colombo on an interim basis, and I sincerely hope that they can resolve the outbreak very quickly, as residents in the home need to be healthy and safe first, but they also need to see their loved ones. I want to extend a sincere thank you on behalf of the residents of Eglinton Lawrence to all who are working tirelessly to protect residents and resolve this outbreak. And to everyone else, let this be a reminder as to why we must continue to stay vigilant and think about each other as we move into the next stage of the pandemic. There is too much at stake to do anything else. Member statements. <laughs> Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. With the COVID-19 pandemic, children have seen their world change drastically and suddenly. It was necessary to close schools and isolate in order to flatten the curve. With these vital changes, however, children are struggling to make sense of their new normal. These are formative years and the isolation, uncertainty, and fear has caused increased anxiety or an exacerbation of existing mental health concerns. For each child who is struggling speaker, there are parents who are desperately trying to help in the best way they know how, while handling their own stress, fear, and uncertainty. And mothers are disproportionately impacted as women take on majority of childcare and emotional household labor. The work of mothers during these unprecedented times is a Sisyphean task. The emotional and mental burden never ends. Mothers trying to work from home have also had to act as supplementary teachers, as child psychologists. They've lain awake at night wondering, am I doing enough? Am I letting my colleagues down, my partner, my parents, my children? That is why it is so important for Ontario to have a properly funded and safe planned return to school and childcare. The mental and emotional impact of this pandemic on women and children cannot be overstated, and the long-term effects will be overwhelming unless we get it right. To fellow moms out there, I see you. I see your child's struggle and your efforts. I see you put aside your own struggle so that you can be a reassuring constant in your children's lives. You are unsung heroes. Thank you. Thank you to the member for Parkdale High Park. Member statements? Member for Burlington. Speaker, acts of kindness continue to flourish in the city of Burlington during the COVID-19 pandemic. One example is Project Kindness. This initiative was created by Don McEachern, who saw struggling restaurants doing everything they could to keep their doors open. Then he heard about a Burlington family that lost one of their own to COVID-19. He was a father, a husband, and a brother. The family was devastated and faced tremendous financial challenges ahead, Speaker. So Don began visiting supermarkets and restaurants to obtain gift cards to ensure this family had their basic needs met. Then he thought, why stop here? There are many more people struggling through the pandemic. Through a Facebook group entitled Burlington, Ontario Takeout and Delivery, Founded by Trevor Pochinek, Sandy Stark, they now have over 12,000 members. Don began distributing gift cards from local restaurants, which he purchased himself to people struggling financially, physically, and emotionally, Speaker. To date, hundreds of people have been impacted by his generosity and his kindness. 
These include frontline workers, first responders, single mums, the elderly, and kids who are helping others during this crisis, just to name a few. Speaker, it is my pleasure to publicly acknowledge Don's efforts and thank him for his selfless compassion. His actions are one more example of the Burlington spirit that I have seen over and over again as a community has rallied together to each other during this difficult time. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Niagara West. Thank you very much, Speaker. I rise in the House today to share how our government has been working hard to expand access to reliable broadband and cell service in underserved parts of the province, including rural areas in my riding of Niagara West. A student learning from home, a farmer checking commodity prices on a phone, or a rural small business owner setting up a website to sell a product online, the COVID-19 outbreak has reinforced the need to improve access to modern digital technology. Here, here. I was pleased this month to inform residents in my riding of the opening of the application intake for the $150 million Improving Connectivity for Ontario program, or the ICON program, as well as $13.3 million for the Niagara region through the Southwestern Integrated Fibre Technology program. Program, including expanded access in Niagara West. This funding is going to help drive economic investment and job creation across our province, as well as allow more people to work from home more efficiently while engaged in online learning and connecting with family and friends. These funds will help ensure that every region in this province, including in Niagara, is able to participate in the modern digital economy and contribute to Ontario's economic recovery. I've heard from many constituents in Niagara calling for better, better connectivity because up to 12 per cent of households in the province, mostly in rural, remote or northern areas, don't have adequate broadband service, according to the CRTC. We are taking steps to address this need. Speaker. Fast, reliable internet is critical, and the ICOM program is an important step to bridging the rural-urban divide in Ontario. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.